Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, if you are a returning family member, subscriber, I am so glad that you decided to come back and join me. Um, thank you so much and I love having you as part of my little family here on YouTube. In this video today, I'm going to do a Bible review of an all new Bible. This is, it's not all new, it's new to me, okay? So let me just throw that out there. Um, this Bible has been on my wish list for quite some time, actually. Um, this is the Holy Land Illustrated Bible in the Christian Standard Edition. This is a visual exploration of the people, places, and things of Scripture. Now, on my legit overall bucket list, going to the Holy Land is top of the list. Like, I have always wanted to go to the Holy Land. Um, that's just something I've always wanted to do. I don't know if I'm ever going to get there. So, I thought, you know what? Let's pick this up and I'll call this my trip. Now, don't get me wrong. If the opportunity arises and if I'm able to afford it, I'm going to absolutely go. But in the meantime, I'm going to use this Bible to be able to see the places of Scripture that I've always wanted to go to and see what else I can learn about it. I did pick up the hardback edition. It does have a dust cover on it, which I'm going to take off in a minute just because of ease of flipping. So let's turn over on the back. So let's look at some of the features. You've got more than 1,100 images, maps, and illustrations with descriptive captions. More than 275 full-length articles from Biblical Illustrator Magazine to provide greater insight and understanding. Over 40 digging deeper call-outs strategically placed throughout the Bible. Um, book introductions, intentionally designed pages to optimize the visual reading experience. This is a two-column text, topical subheadings, nine-and-a-half point font, easy-to-read black letter text. There are footnotes, two ribbon markers for easy referencing between pages, and there is a concordance. And again, this is the Christian Standard Bible, the CSB. If you are interested in the translation, you can see that again down here. Here is your ISBN information. Um, the MSRP is $49.99. I got it off of christianbook.com during a sale. Did not pay full price for it, and I got free shipping. So, learn how to optimize sales and coupons for free shipping. So, I am going to take off this dust jacket just so as I flip through the Bible, it's not going to get in the way. I will keep it on there um, to help protect the Bible. But you may not want it on there because this is actually not a bad looking cover. So this is a hardback. This part right here is um, kind of canvassy, and this is just not. All right, so you open it up. You have your paste down liner, your presentation page, title page. Here is your table of contents. An introduction. I love, 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 love a full color Bible, you guys. Like, this makes my heart happy, okay? I love all kinds of full color images in the Bible to help me understand and get a better overall picture of places that I have never been to, culturally, things that I am clueless about, and this just gives me a better visual overall presentation. All right, here are the articles within this Bible. And here is the title, here is the author, and here is the page number. And you have one, two, hold on, brand new Bible, sticky pages. Three, four, five, six, Seven, seven page, uh, no, just kidding. Six pages of different articles, like 
So again, you've got titles, the author, and your page numbers. You've got six of these pages, so that's a lot of articles in there. You have digging deeper articles. Here's a list of maps and illustrations. Here is your list of contributors. Your introduction to the Christian Standard Bible. And again, always read the introductions to the Bibles. It's going to give you a better overall sense and idea um, of what the um, translators were going through and how they arrived at this particular text. Abbreviations that you might see in CSB Bibles. And then here we are, we're diving into the Old Testament. So let's start in with Genesis. And this is a picture. It says, in southern Israel, the northern Negev desert, where it meets the central plains, the Judean hills rise in the background. Abraham lived for a time in Gerar and Beersheba in the Negev. I may have totally butchered that pronunciation. But again, visual imagery of what I may never get to see. And if I'm reading scripture and if I'm reading about Abraham and it's talking about where he lived, this is what it looked like. All right, here's your introduction. We're getting into scripture. All right, here is a word study on God created. Here are some ruins from the ancient site of Ebla, now called Tel Mardik in modern northwest Syria. It says, in the 1970s, archaeologists unearthed thousands of tablets, some containing stories that are similar to the biblical accounts of the flood, the Tower of Babylon, and creation. However, the people of Ebla worshipped other gods. Here is a partial tablet containing the Mesopotamian creation myth celebrating the god Marduk defeating, I can't pronounce that. The Tigris River in Eastern Turkey. Is it not awesome when you see like a picture of the Tigris or the Euphrates? These rivers have been around since creation. Love this. All right. All these pictures. Here is a digging deeper article. You see down here some of your um, extra little textual information. A more, I'm sorry, another digging deeper article. Ancient altars. So here's pictures of what ancient altars would have looked like. Different articles. Um, altars were not unique to Israel. Other nations also built altars to worship uh, to worship their gods. Archaeologists archaeologists have uncovered an altar with multiple faces carved into it at Tanakh, where Deborah and Barak defeated the Canaanites under Sisera. Judges five nineteen through twenty. A watchtower overlooking the grain fields near the Valley of Lebanon in Israel. And this is a study of ancient towers. More information on these towers. And then you get back into scripture. Ur, capital of the world. Here's another good article. There's a lot of good historical information, archaeological information. Here's an article on Abraham's travels. This is a picture of ruins of Beersheba in southern Israel. Again, there's no way that I'm going to get into everything, but this is so exciting. I would love to be able to go to the Holy Land and actually see some of these places. And I have friends that have been, um, but man, oh man. And yes, I know that um, some, I don't need to let these type of articles overshadow the actual biblical text. So don't come at me. I know, I hear it. 
But these articles are going to help me understand the biblical text, the culture. Because I don't know if you know, our culture is not nearly the same as what it was in biblical times. I hope you get that. Cisterns. We learned about cisterns. All right, guys, I'm just going to keep flipping. Um, here's signet rings. We do hear about the importance of signet rings in Scripture. Pharaoh removed his ring and placed it on Joseph's finger when he made him vizier of Egypt. So if you don't know what a um, signet ring looks like, there you go. There are some examples. The Egypt Joseph knew. Servants in the house of Pharaoh. All right, so I'm going to start flipping a little bit faster, and I'm going to skip some. Um, just going to flip through really quick and skip through. Here's Exodus. Your intro to Exodus. Moses' early life. More articles. Uh, Pharaoh's question, who is Yahweh? When it gets to talking about the plagues. Again, good articles. If this kind of information is interesting to you, if you are interested in the historical aspect, the archaeological aspect, some of the cultural aspect. This might be a Bible that you are interested in. To my knowledge, the Holy Land Illustrated Study Bible only comes in the CSB or the Christian Standard Edition. I did purchase the hardback. There are other um, covers available. Um, you can also get thumb indexing on it. But there are some faux leather. You might have some genuine leather covers. So there, again, there's other covers that are available. I just chose the hardback for um, a little bit of price savings for when I ordered and placed my order. All right, so here is a map example. And this is in Joshua. Here's some more of the Digging Deeper articles. An article on the peoples of Canaan. Jericho, a strategic locale. And I'm singing in my head the song, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho when the walls came tumbling down. Um, chariots. Sorry, you did not need to hear me sing. I'm sure most of y'all have heard that song if you grew up in church. All right, here's some quick flipping. Where we're going to, because there's no way I can flip through this whole Bible. While we are filming this video, it will take forever. Moab. So, obviously, we're in the book of Ruth. Talking about Moab. Here's a history of Moab and its people. Here's a map. Here's what it looks like. Here is an article on the kinsman redeemer, his rights, and the responsibility. So, good article to read in understanding Boaz as Ruth's kinsman redeemer. And maybe once we read this article, we'll figure out why the actual first kinsman redeemer in line once he found out what all um the kinsman redeemer was going to obtain with ruth he said nope i'm out so therefore boaz became the kinsman redeemer um here is a good article on Le levirate marriage i probably butchered that pronunciation and the book of ruth Sealing the deal in the ancient Near East. And then we get to Samuel. All right. I'm going to just do some quick flipping through some of this because, again, there's no way. I would love to go through page by page with you guys. 
but there's no way that we don't have all day. Um, the Jerusalem gates. So guess what? These are you could these are still here. You could go see the Jerusalem gates to this day. Zerubbabel's temple. More maps, pictures, articles. This looks like a lot of really good information. And it, I mean, it truly is from the, the aspect, this is the Holy Land. All right, here's an article on Elisha, his life and mission. So if you wanted to do a deep dive study on Elisha, here's a good article that gives you some good information. All right, let's look at... All right, this is in Proverbs. Here's an article on wealth, trade, money, and coinage in the biblical world. Long article. Here are some samples of some coins. This is a shekel minted in Jerusalem. This is a bronze coin from the time of Herod. Um, this is a drachma from Parthia. All right, there's your scripture. Here you see the two-column text. And because we are in Proverbs, you've got a verse-by-verse verse format. It is not like that in the other books. Here's the Song of Songs. Isaiah. So they do have it verse-by-verse. Verse. Okay. Let me flip back and look. Okay. In some of the older historical books, you have paragraph format. Here in the poetry, um, and I, I'm going to make an assumption in the prophets. Isaiah and Jeremiah are verse-by-verse verse lines. All right, when you go to Ezekiel, you go back to paragraph type text formatting. So, there's several different ways of the formatting of your text in here. If that is important to you, it may not be. When, look, when you flip through, you can see all the different color articles right there. You see all that? Lots of good information. All right, let's go to... I want to see if there's information on the intertestamental period um, between Malachi and Matthew. If you watched my video on the, um, the NIV Study Bible Fully Revised Edition, it had a fabulous article um, between Malachi and Matthew that covered some really good information on the intertestamental period. So I want to see if this has anything similar. New Testament, and we're jumping into Matthew. So, no, it does not. So, this jumps from, um, this article is the spiritual climate in the time of Malachi to Malachi's situation, some other stuff, cleaning clothes in the ancient Near East. And we finish Malachi here, and we go straight to the New Testament. So this does not have an article on intertestamental um, information, like historically what was going on, social, sociological what was going on, culturally, that kind of thing. All right, so we're talking about the genealogy of Jesus. A man winnowing wheat in Jordan. So that looks pretty modern day, you guys. Mary's well, located inside the Greek Orthodox Church in Nazareth, was likely the only water source of Nazareth for centuries. All right, again, you've got some really good information and articles here. And I'm just going through pretty quickly. There's a pair of Egyptian basketry woven papyrus sandals. 
dated 1570 to 1070 BC. All right. Amazing that they lasted this long. Here's some different tools from Joseph the Carpenter, what they would have looked like. All right, here is the second ribbon bookmarker. And just so you know, it is a, if you care, this is, it does look like it is double-sided satin. Nope, just kidding, maybe, I don't know. I can't tell. Does it really matter? All right, moving on. This is the Church of Transfiguration atop Mount Tabor. According to a tradition, the church marks the spot where Jesus appeared in his glory before three of his disciples. A church has been on the site since the 6th century. The present Franciscan church was built in 1924, rising to 1,843 feet above sea level. Mount Tabor overlooks the Jezreel Valley. So you're still gonna have articles. This is a fig tree. You've got some coin pictures, Herod's temple a model of the sanctuary of Herod's temple, more coins used in banking, dining practices. We're still in Matthew. All right, here is, you're getting to the death of Jesus. Um, here is artist renderings of, the, of a first century crucifixion. There's Mark. All right, and I'm gonna start flipping a little bit faster. I do wanna get to John. Looks like silver coins found. All right. Doing some quick flipping. Again, these articles look so good. Foot washing practices and um, here is a map of the Passion Week. The Kidron Valley. Interesting that this doesn't have a lot of information on the crucifixion or pictures from that time. That's okay. All right, Acts, the beginning of the church. And again, so you have all these articles interspersed with like, here's your scripture. You've got two pictures right here. You do have some reference material right here. Again, more pictures. Here is your text. And this is in Acts chapter nine, road to Damascus. Paul's sermon in Antioch of Pisidia, Caesarea, Herod's port city. Here's a map. This is Paul's missionary journeys. I wish this one were bigger, but there's probably a bigger map in the back. All right, so we see that there's a ton of good information. So let's get to I always like going to Revelation. There's Jude. You have more introductory pages, it looks like, to Jude than actual text in Jude. That's funny. All right, Revelation. Ruins of ancient Thyatira in modern Akizar, Turkey. Probably terrible pronunciation. Overlooking part of the shoreline of Patmos. This is an overview of ancient Pergamum. The amphitheater here, this is an amphitheater. I don't know if you can tell, but it seated 50,000 spectators. This is Colonnaded Forum in Smyrna. Here is a map of the seven churches in Revelation. So here's Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Philadelphia, 
Laodicea. All right, we're getting into the scrolls. Here's a um, bronze dragon. Here's a picture of Megiddo, and Megiddo was a Canaanite stronghold that overlooked the Jezreel Valley and guarded the main pass through the Carmel Mountains. And again, if I mispronounce that, I do apologize. All right, so at the end of the scripture, you have your table of weights and measures. If you ever look at this, you are way better than me because I never look at this. You do have a concordance. It is probably not a thorough concordance, but you do have a concordance. Okay. You have that many pages in a concordance. Here are art credits. Then you have your maps. So there are maps. And one thing I do want to notate, this, these maps are on Bible paper. So you're saving some of the thickness of the Bible by having it printed on the same paper. Of course, it is still full color. More maps. And more maps. More maps. Here's another bigger map of Paul's missionary journeys. Here's another map of the Passion Week in Jerusalem. And that is the end of the Bible. You come to the back with that paste down liner. All right, so again, this is the Holy Land Illustrated Bible from um, the CSB. Holman is the publisher of this Bible. So if you have ever been interested in the Holy Land, but you're like me, you don't know if you're ever going to get there, this Bible has got some great articles, some great pictures, um, looks like really good information that will help you understand just more of the people, places, and things of the scripture that you're actually reading. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review of this Bible. If you have questions, please let me know. Now, I have not actually used this. I just got this in, um, but I do plan on pulling it out to use it in conjunction with some of my other study Bibles. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you like um, this Bible review, please give me a thumbs up. If you have questions about it, please comment below and hopefully I can answer them. If not, I will try to find the answer. I will have this Bible linked below on christianbook.com and I will link the hardback one. If you are familiar with Christian Book, once you pull up one of the Bibles, it will show you all the different formats and cover options that are available. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a joyful day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.